Hey everybody, my name is Jen and this is Jen Geigley Knits. And welcome if you haven't been here before. Welcome back if you have been here before. After last week's episode, I don't even know where to begin because last week I was talking about casting on all these different projects and then I did cast on a whole lot of projects last week, like one day this, one day this, one day this, one day this. I did one thing during the Super Bowl. I did one thing like on Saturday night. It was just chaos and I'm not ashamed and I'm not embarrassed. It's just kind of funny now that I see what I've done. <laughs> but um, I was just watching recently the Modern Daily Knitting episode of Knit Stars, which they've opened up some of the classes to purchase individually. And I had seen this one on a preview like a couple of years ago. And I just love Ann and Kay. You guys know that I absolutely adore them and they're my good friends. And there's just something about them. Their storytelling and their soothing way of talking and then just listening to them talk about knitting of their collective years of experience in the knit world is just very soothing and comforting to me. And it's just like hanging out with my good friends, Anne and Kay. And so I got that episode of Knit Stars on its own because I'd seen part of it as a preview maybe a couple of years ago and just really enjoyed it. And it's just a very good like background thing to have on while you're working. So anyway, I was listening to that as I was casting on one of my, I think four things that I cast on last week. <laughs> and they were saying, there's no shame in doing that, but that knitting is, our hobby and it brings us joy and it makes us happy. And you, you don't have to feel pressured and or bad or guilty about not finishing certain things and then starting a new thing that does make you happy. And like, I, I think I've got all my whips before this finished. So it is a fresh start. And if I wanna start four things at a time, then I'm gonna start four things at a time. <laughs> And yeah, they had a lot of beautiful moments in those little talks on that Knit Stars, um, what do you call it? Not an episode, but a season? I'm not sure. Anyway, you don't have to buy the whole season. You can just get the MDK one. They also have, the other one I grabbed was the Summerly Knits, um, her socks, because I love her socks. She has a separate one. You can just kind of pick a la carte for a few of them. They have them available, so that's kind of cool. I usually can't afford the whole seasons of Knit Stars, but I do really enjoy watching when they have like a deal or a preview or a little thing. Sometimes they have some little free ones throughout the year. So I always check those out and I've enjoyed everything I've ever watched. So maybe someday I'll splurge on a whole season. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, I'll show you a couple happy mail things I got in the mail this week and then I'll get into the things I cast on. So I do, I remember last week, it's like these words were ringing in my memory all week and they kind of haunted me the rest of the time. But last week I said, you know, maybe next week I'll have like four little projects of this much each. And that's exactly what happened. But anyway, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, I've been kind of back into a sewing kick after finishing that quilt top that I showed last week. And so I kind of, I don't know, I've got a few little things in mind. I wanna make like a family quilt, kind of a kid quilt for my kids that they can share. I also took this class on like Skillshare, not Skillshare, Create, Create Bug, Creative Bug, um, with, I'm forgetting her name, one moment, let me look. Sorry, I had to look it up. It's with Heidi Parks and it's a really interesting quilt class where each block had a different theme and you do a little hand embroidery on each one or you trace a handprint of your child or have them sign their name on a piece of fabric with a fabric marker and then you, you know, embroider over it and just these cute little things to kind of make a special quilt for your loved ones. And then I was looking on Instagram because I follow all the quilters and sewists of Instagram, just like the knitters and the crocheters of Instagram. <laughs> so. This one is a new person to me and her name is spelled M-I-E-S-J-E and then C-H-A-F-E-R. And I wanna say it's Misha Schaefer. I'm not sure if that's right, but um, she has these really beautiful, funky prints and she was selling these little packets of just little 
pieces and I just thought they were so much fun. I think she's Dutch. And so I was waiting because I think I ordered these quite a while ago. I'm sure with the International Mail, you never know how long things are going to take. But look how fun. Ooh, they're going to fall. These little, I don't know. This just seems like a really fun addition to what I was kind of working on. And I'll show sometime my Heidi Parks blocks. You kind of do one at a time. They're very free form. And I just needed some fun things to mix into that. And I think this is the perfect little pack of fabrics that are just really different colors, very modern that fits kind of our vibe, but look how fun, I love these. So I got this little pack from her. And I think she still has these on her website. I'll show you her little card in case you're interested in that and I'll put it in the notes below, but it's just really sweet. So that was a fun thing to get in the mail this week. And especially as spring and summer rolls around, I do feel like sewing more often. So I'm not gonna be surprised if I end up kind of meandering that way, but I do have a lot of whips to work on uh, for knitting anyway. I had one more thing come in the mail that I'm very excited about. And um, to go back to my sewing stuff, I love collecting Ikea fabrics. I don't even know if they make them like they used to where they could get them by the yard. I don't, haven't seen that at my Ikea store. I usually go to Minneapolis or Kansas City. I haven't seen it there, but um, let me know if you do see that because I just see old ones now that I will go search for on eBay or Etsy. And so this is one I'd had my eye on, but I could never find like a reasonable price. And this one was so reasonable. So I don't know if you've, um, I don't think I did this on YouTube, but a couple years ago, I made a dress out of an Ikea duvet cover. Like our bedding became my dress. And I had a picture of me laying, oh, I'll find the picture, hold on. <laughs> I had a picture of me laying on our bed in the matching dress because I decided not to cut up our bedding or I bought an extra one because we really like that bedding. It's a black and white graphic print. And then I made a dress out of a twin size and I have one more twin left in case I wanna make, I'm thinking about pants, like a pants outfit with like a top matching. That's like another weird sewing goal I have. But anyway, let me put that here so you can see what I'm talking about, but I love Ikea fabric. So that's why when I saw this one, on Etsy, it just kind of popped up in my feed because they know what I like. Um, I had to get this. And this is an older one. And they, it's fun because they always have, if they have the salvage still on, it'll tell you what year it's from. And so this one's from 2005 by Anna Efferlund, Ikea of Sweden. I am just a sucker for this, but look how it's my colors. <laughs> So I don't even know how much yardage I got because I can't remember. I know it's just like a little remnant. I will make something out of this. I don't know if I can maybe make a squeeze a dress out of it. And if I can't, maybe I can make a top. But that's maybe a couple yards. Oh, it's cut. There's a cut in it. But I kind of knew that. But look how fun and oversized. It is giant and so cool. And maybe if I cut it carefully, I can get a few pieces out of it or something or a skirt. I don't know if I want a skirt. I was hoping for, I don't know, the print is so large. It's tricky to know exactly like what this would do as a garment, but I am willing to give it a shot. And that's how my duvet cover was too. I was like, this looked totally like I'm wearing a sheet. <laughs> but this is like quilting cotton, a heavier one. And if I can't figure it out, I will make like a cool blanket or a pillow would be very cool out of this. But I would really like to make something wearable. This is like my last piece of fun Happy Mail that I got this week. And there's a good chance that I could find another little scrap of this. I've seen this one before on Etsy, so maybe if I go look around, I can find it again and get just a little bit more to see what patterns I have that could maybe fit this. I don't even know what the yardage is because I got that big chunk out of it. But this was only $11. 
And sometimes the old Ikea fabrics go for like 80, you know, 90, even just for a couple yards. So $11, I will make something cool out of this for sure. Then another cute little surprise from my friend, Ruth. Thank you, Ruth, if you happen to see this. Um, me and Ruth talk on Instagram and messages all the time. But um, we were talking about the emotional support chickens, which I'm sure you've seen, and they have them at the Knitting Tree LA. Is that right? Let me look. I had this just pulled up too. The, yeah, the Knitting Tree LA carries the emotional support chicken kits. And I also saw them at Rhinebeck in the Yarnbirds, maybe, the little van, caravan thing. But um, I know you've seen them. I'll put a picture here in case you don't know what I'm talking about. It's the emotional support chicken. So yeah, Ruth and I were talking about the emotional support chicken and then she said she had had to buy like a whole big package of the little safety eyes. <laughs> And so she sent me the little yellow safety eyes in case I decide to make my emotional support chicken, which was so sweet. It's like, when you have some extra eyes, just share them with a friend. And that was so cute to get that in the mail. Plus she sent me an awesome little dishcloth, which I love a hand knit dishcloth like no other. And I've already washed and used this one a couple of times. So thank you, Ruth, because that is the sweetest. I love like little hand knit gifts from a friend or like what's better than a little dishcloth? It's adorable. Okay, anyway, that was really fun to get that in the mail as a little surprise with my plastic eyes. <laughs> um, and then, before I get into all this, next week I'm gonna be shifting gears a little bit because um, if you've seen in my past episodes, I have a Dean and Bean yellow sock knitting machine, like the cranking ones. Um, it's a little different than like an Earl Bacher, but same results. And I'm so, so, so lucky because we have a local crank in coming up, not this weekend, but next weekend, just outside of Des Moines where I live. And there's not that many of these events. I feel like I don't hear about them very often. So this one brings people from all around. Like last year was my first time going and there's people from Minneapolis. I think there was people from Nebraska and Illinois and can't like Missouri and Kansas City and area. So um, I was really surprised to see how many, I figured it'd just be some local Iowa people and it was people from everywhere because it's a big deal. It's like a fun thing to get together with a bunch of people with these machines and they're all different machines. There was people that had vintage machines and there was people that have been doing this since the 80s and had, you know, had all the tips and tricks and they'll do little tutorials during the weekend. So I'm really looking forward to that. Last year I went for the first time and I had just recently purchased my machine and it was still brand new to me. And so I remember sitting here and I made a video about it if you wanna go look, it's from a year ago. Um, but I was sitting here with my machine all packed up and my supplies and my yarn. I was ready to go to this thing. And I was so intimidated though, to go for the first time, especially knowing that I did not know what I was doing. And um, then I walked into this room full of machines, full. I cannot remember how many people were there, but it was like, wow. <laughs> This is a thing. And then I was really intimidated then. And, but then, you know, they were so welcoming and found me a little place to sit and you bring your own table and just situate yourself and sit down. And then I learned so much that weekend. And there was a couple other Dean and Mich Bean Machine people there. There was one from the company who came just to kind of help us. So I had no idea that they were going to be there. And I cranked my first sock ever and I'm talking, including the, the cuff, the heel, and the toe, all on the machine. And it was just a complete mystery to me. And then it just all made sense very slowly. And so I'm so excited to go back to this event now, knowing a little bit, like I, I got a gear of that under my belt and I'm still by no means an expert, but I think I'm gonna be in a lot better place this year going into it and I'll actually get some socks done and I'm so excited. So next week will be a little bit different. I think I'm going to be showing like my preparation for getting ready for the event. I'm going to show you some sock cranking stuff and I might, what I really want to do is I want to show you how 
You can also crank a tube on a machine and then split it and then do like afterthought heel tough cuff wow toe by hand. I always think that's really kind of my way of what I want. I love doing it all on the machine too. That's just a magical thing that that's even possible. The first time I saw that, I was like, no way is that, that could I do that? But you can. But um, I really love hand knitting that too because I'm really particular about my cuff and my heel and my toe. And I like those to be hand knit sometimes or it's fun to add a contrast color by hand after the fact. So if I have time next week before I go, I'm gonna maybe show how I do that. So come back if you wanna see that, it's gonna be fun. And then I'll, the next week after that, I'll show you the event itself because it's really fun and interesting and kind of a different type of knitting event. So come back for that next Saturday. But for now, let's get to what I've been working on this past week. So the first thing I cast on was something I didn't even talk about casting on last week, but something popped up in my feed, you know how that happens. And I, I've been looking for an excuse to make a sweater out of this exact Noro. And this is that really natural, nice worsted Noro. I've been having, I've been just like thinking about this a ton because you can get it in like a really nice black, a really nice cream, a really nice oatmeal, and then this beautiful kind of brown color. They're all very natural and I've seen this pronounced two different ways and I don't know the correct one, but I believe it's either Hanui or Hanui. And it's just beautiful. It is very soft. It has a lot of squish um, and a lot of bounce to it. And I just, I don't know. So the right sweater pattern just kind of fell into my lap because my friend Alicia Plummer and I talk sometimes on Instagram, also in the messages, and she just released a new pattern for a sweater called Aperture, and she used Noro Silk Garden for hers, which is gorgeous. You have to go check it out, because it's like, or here, I'll put a picture right here. But I loved her version and then I thought, I wonder if that's the same gauge as this that I've been wanting to use so badly and it is. And so I only, and these are huge balls of yarn. I can't remember the yardage, 400 meters. Um, and so I only had to get three of these for my size of Alicia Plummer's new sweater called Aperture, which is a very basic sort of cropped boxy sweater um, it's a raglan, and so for some reason, I was just like, I have to make it in this right now. <laughs> and so I cast on, and I've got a good little start on it. Um, I'm already going in the round. I did all my short rows, and not short rows, but just the shaping in the back, the neck shaping, and then just kind of zoomed along. It's knit on US 8s for the most part. And so I just jumped right in and this feels so nice. I wish I could give you this squish. I mean, that's all you get, but <laughs> I'm so excited to just have a very basic, nice Noro kind of brown, simple sweater. So this is exciting. So that's Aperture by Alicia Plummer and go check out her pictures on Instagram because it's really a fun sweater and I'm excited to wear it. Next up, I did decide to cast on the Crowberry sweater from the brand new Modern Daily Knitting Field Guide Moss by Helene Magnuson. And so I got out my Plotulopi and then I got her, oh, I have no place to put all this. <laughs> um, I ordered some of her love story, which is this teeny tiny itty bitty special lace weight yarn that you hold with the Plotulopi. Um, this is Icelandic lamb's wool and it has this adorable little label with the sheep. It's so cute. And you can see the little bit of, it's just very soft, fuzzy, special, it just adds a little bit of, mm. and it also adds a little strength to the, um, to the Lopi because as I was talking about last time, it's a little bit delicate, but I have had no 
instances so far where it has broken at all. So it's not like you can't just knit normally. I'm not taking extra special care with it or anything. I'm just knitting normally with these two held together. This is my darker gray. I got um, a lighter and then the black, um, and then I'm holding it with the rest of these as we get there. But what was I saying? I have not knitted with care or anything. It has held up very nicely. And then the two of these together make this really pretty kind of marled gray. I do have to untangle carefully because it gets a little sticky together when I hold them together. But I love so far the shaping on this sweater. Um, I don't know if you can tell from the picture in the book and I'll put a picture right here just to show you what I'm talking about. So yeah, this is the Crowberry sweater and I'm already loving the shaping that's happening. It's not just, I don't know if you can tell from the picture, but there is a dropped back on this sweater. So it's like kind of cropped to the front and then there's, there's shaping in the back with short rows that make it a little bit longer in the back, which I love. Like when you lean forward, your sweater doesn't go up <laughs> and it just looks cool. The shaping is really neat. And so let me see if I can kind of show you how much it slopes. There's the front here that slopes to a longer back back here. So that's quite a bit longer here. And in the front, it's just quite a bit shorter. But I have a nice little start on it. And it's very easy. There's a nice little twisted rib at the bottom hem. I think I did a couple extra rows than they asked for. She had a very short little rib section, but I do like how that looks. And then now I'm just kind of knitting up and doing a little shaping. There's, it's kind of an A-line shape um, here. And then you do a couple little decreases up to the underarm area as you go up. But I'm just kind of in stockinette mode right now, going upward until I hit the underarm and do some color work. And then I just keep thinking about the color work because <laughs> they um, Modern Daily Knitting had a nice little um, Zoom session to kind of welcome the new field guide and Helene um, and kind of let them explain the designs and talk through everything and go through each one, which is really fun to find out more. And then I found out um, a lot of her designs are based on the moss in Iceland. Like she has a whole set, I think, of a sweater and mittens and other things too that is all about the moss. And so then I was looking at my, you know, my selection of naturals, which I do really love. Like I, this is actually really nice when I see it here, but then I was thinking about the moss and I mil I really do want to kind of add in a green element to keep her moss vision going with the crowberry. So, I mean, maybe I can mix all of these in to that yoke because there's a lot going on up there. There's some leaves, there's actual berries that are bottles. And then, you know, with my gray main color, I think anything goes. So stay tuned to see what I decide with that. But I'm really loving, this is a very kind of airy, light sweater. You can tell it's gonna be that way. It's knit on pretty large needles. I think the ribbing was on maybe US nines and then the main body is on a US 10. So it does create this very special fabric that is sturdy and soft but also kind of airy, like you can see through. And I just already envision wearing this like over a denim shirt. I can just see it. And then that longer back. So anyway, I'm very excited to get this going and just to have a little head start on the knit along. Did I already talk about the knit along? I can't remember what I've said. If I haven't said it yet, there is a thing that Modern Daily Knitting does for some of their field guides, they will have something called bang out a sweater where you all knit a sweater like in a month's time. And I think that's very doable with this gauge. And so that starts in March, but I just wanted a little jump start on the bang out a sweater for the Crowberry. And so I, I'm happy to kind of get this going even just a little bit at a time while I'm working on all my other projects. <laughs> And then we'll see if I wanna work, I do wanna work in this this nice, it's kind of a subtle green that goes with my naturals, I think. So we will see. And this knits up, this will be fine on this needle. Like, I don't think it's gonna matter 
that I don't have a matching love story to hold with it. I think I'll, that lopi will just be mixed into the yolk. So that's my rough plan for that. And I'm excited to have this little start on it. Then during the Super Bowl, <laughs> which I normally do not care about, do not watch, but I could tell this is, it was like a, it was a very fun game to watch. Taylor Swift or not, whatever you, whatever your feelings are about all of that. <laughs> I mean, I love her, but um, I just wanted to watch the game for once and like see the halftime show. I was hanging out with the kids. We were all just kind of doing our own thing. And so I started this at the beginning of the game and got pretty far. And this is again on another project on kind of larger needles. And this yarn is, wow, I have so many yarn labels everywhere. Does this even go with this? No, this is a different one. Hold on, okay. This yarn is Sandness Fritta's yarn. And it's lovely. I wanna make a bunch of sweaters out of this. It knits up so quickly. Look at how beautiful. Um, I always love a little bit of a chunky yarn. I wouldn't even say, I don't know if it's like a heavy worsted, but I, lo and I love this color. This is like such a different one for me. I know I said that last time, but it really, really is. And I love that. And so this is how far I got. There is, um, the neckline is knitted longer, typical. So you can fold it in and it will, when it's folded, it will be about here like fold it in and sewn down when you're done. And then look at the beautiful color work already. I absolutely love, the, the feel of it is just perfect. I just wanna make like 10 more sweaters with this yarn. Um, these colors, I absolutely love what they're doing. It's just a very simple motif going around and I just kind of got one little repeat of a chart done. And then I remember thinking in the beginning when I bought this, I was like, ooh, I don't like that, but I do. <laughs> they totally know what they're doing. I love when some unexpected colors come together and it looks so nice. together. So I'm very, very happy with this. Um, it's hilarious because rarely do I run into like a fair isle situation where you have three colors at once, but this does, which it didn't occur to me. It didn't really look like it did, but it does. You would do all three at once just for a little while in here. And I think in coming up in the next part of the pattern you do as well. Um, but with this gauge, that's really easy to do. And I was just holding the three strands, like I hold them all in my right hand, left hand. Wow. <laughs> but it was not a big deal. But um, that three stranded color work comes up again in my next project. So anyway, this is the Tinda sweater and it is from this Sandness book. And there it is on the cover. So here is what I'm making. It's Tinda, like T-I-N-D-E. And look at, oh, it's so cute how they styled it. Seriously, this whole book is so cute. Anyway, that is what I'm working on. And I can see this just, I can, if I just focused on one thing, this would maybe be the first one because I can just bust this out, I feel, in no time. Because really it was just this ribbing that took a bit. And then I just started cruising through. I just did some more increases, so I'm just ready to keep going to that next little color work section. And last but not least, I started my Noctua Day cowl, which is the butterfly cowl that I showed last time um, from Brooklyn General. It's by Katherine Clark. I'll show you a picture of the finished one here. And this is the one I mentioned before that I didn't realize it has three stranded color work almost the whole way through. <laughs> and I'm just getting started. I have like three big sections left, but it's a cowl. It's really not like that much knitting, but these fine strands of yarn, um, I'm finding it's it's not, the, the color work is not hard. The pattern, it's like gorgeously beautiful and amazing. And I, it's so worth it. But 
these three getting tangled every time I try to trap a float because it'll be in a weird spot because a lot of white background area or this gray and then there's a lot of floats to catch on the way and then it gets a little bit like don't look at the inside of this it's kind of a disaster <laughs> but um then these end up you know crossing each other crossing each other but like one will cross one the other one will cross you know with two strands it's kind of easy to kind of just you know undo it but with three i have started um the habit of every time i make a full round i stop and then i do this with the balls and like undo the twisting of the three like this one's twisted four times and this one's around two and this is a barber pole over here of these two it's like <laughs> so it's a little slow going but it's so beautiful already and I'm so excited to just have it able to wear and done so I've got one little moth butterfly four times around that's like forming and then there's like a stitch marker I put a stitch marker in the middle of each one look how pretty it is and then, um, so it's like a four repeat around. And then for my spin cycle, which is this salty dog, and I love this. I wanna make everything out of salty dog now. <laughs> it even matches my cardigan, which I did not make. But um, what I decided to do is there was a lot of this yellow on the outside of this. And I really wanted to get into the orangey yellow and maybe even the green by the time this is over and since I'm not making a sweater um, I was afraid that my yellow was just gonna stay yellow the whole way because it doesn't really have a chance to change and so I did wind off all of this kind of solid yellow there's like a greeny yellow in there and then more of this regular yellow and then I wanted to get to the orangier yellow so now I'm kind of working into that and that's the fun thing about spin cycles, you can kind of control it. And I've done that in my um, throw over sweater that I did with the, it was like a navy sweater. And then this is kind of a fiery color, of like orange, red, yellow. And I wound that into balls so I could kind of control the color changes because you want it to hit, you know, within the design. And so I am making an effort to make that happen kind of you know, type A, <laughs> but look how pretty it is changing. Like it's so hard to see because I know I'm not very far, but um, it's very beautiful. So you can see the, the yellow is changing into the oranginess. And I just want to get to the middle section of those butterflies because they're extra beautiful and bigger. And so I think that'll be really pretty to see the shift. And I can always bring in some more yellow again for those and do the yellow orange maybe with the green, I can kind of wind little balls and take and pick, you know, what each row will shift into. So that's been really fun. Just a lot of yarn management with the three strands. So, cause you know, all of this starting here has been three strands going up, even in the sections, you don't really see it. And I could duplicate stitch, but I'm just gonna keep it all in there because it does make a warmer cowl. And then, like I mentioned last time, you can make an optional lining, which I am definitely doing because then it hides all your floats and makes it extra cozy and soft on the inside. I don't want all those strings, like that will drive me crazy. <laughs> So I love that they did this optional lining that you do add on at the end. So this is Mayak and I ordered this from Brooklyn General with the, you know, so I've got all the right colors that go with everything and it's called Naturally Soft. It's baby, 100% baby yak. This is the color oatmeal and it is so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. I'm going to use the rest of this on something else, maybe a hat held together with something else because it's very, very fine. Um, I think it's lace weight. And it's beautiful. So at the end, that will go inside and make it extra, extra, extra special, soft, cozy. And yeah, thank you, you all, all you sweet people who commented um, last time I told a little cute, sweet, um, story about my grandma and the butterflies. And I know that's not unique. A lot of us have like a little story like that, but 
Um, your comments about that were very, very kind and sweet, and I really appreciated that. So thank you for all the sweetness about the butterflies, and this does make this project extra, extra special to me personally. So um, yeah, I can't wait to finish it and wear it, and um, we're supposed to get snow maybe again this weekend, so I'm sure I'll have plenty of more opportunities to wear this before spring, but if not, it'll be like a little cozy companion for future winters, and I just love it so much already. So I'm excited about all that, especially this lining. I think that's it this week. I don't want to drag it out too long. I just wanted to show you my projects and what I started and what I've been working on this week, and it's kind of been interesting. And it's been fun, honestly, to have all of these options to work on for whatever mood I happen to be in. So I can do like teeny tiny butterfly color work, or I can do like this big chunky color work, which is kind of fun to like, what am I feeling right now? Or I can do my stockinette on my Plotu Lopi from my MDK field guide, or I can do raglan increases on my Noro. And I think it's like all these yarns are just exciting to me right now and it's energizing and it really does bring me joy and happiness. So I'm not sad that I started all this at once. And I don't know now what I was thinking about earlier is should I pick one thing to just work on next week and finish one thing? Or should I keep going like this and just pick up what I'm in the mood for? I kind of think that's what's happening because I've been throwing one thing in the car and I have one thing on that couch back there to watch, you know, shows with the kids at night or whatever happens to be going on. And it is fun to just pick one thing. Like this sounds good. You know, I have all these choices. <laughs> so uh, check back next week to see what I worked on. And then also, like I mentioned next week, I'm gonna be preparing for the crank in, the sock crank in, um, which happens next weekend. It's kind of like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, long weekend thing. So I'll be, be uh, preparing for that. And maybe I'll have a little sock fun to show you beforehand next time. And then the next week will be the crank in like, whatever, recap. <laughs> but I'm excited for that. I'm really excited. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, I'm recording this actually on Valentine's Day, so happy like post-Valentine's weekend. We always decide kind of just to stay home on Valentine's because uh, the restaurants get so busy and it gets crazy out there. So we might get takeout from our favorite spot tonight, or sometimes Bo brings home Jenny's ice cream from Whole Foods, and that's like our favorite, favorite treat. So maybe we'll do that tonight. Um, but we're mostly just hanging out and the kids are doing whatever, and then... Um, in two days on Friday is Bowie's birthday, my son, and he turns 12 and I just cannot believe that. Um, it was my daughter's birthday exactly two weeks ago. So they have birthdays right together. And so we're going to be celebrating that this weekend. So it's kind of a big weekend coming up, but also got some chill knitting time. So I'm excited about that. And that is about it. So thank you once again for watching and hanging out with me. I really appreciate you being here. I love reading your comments. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like this video. And if you'd like to see more, hit the notifications bell. All the, the good things that I'm supposed to say. <laughs> but yeah, I really do appreciate it. It really does help out my channel. Every like, every comment, every subscription, it, it does matter and it helps me keep going. So thank you for that. And then check back with me next Saturday. I have a video every Saturday morning so you can knit with me on the weekend and hang out while you're working on your projects. So thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you have a good weekend and a good week ahead and take care. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.